Let me move on to a subject that's near and dear to me right now, and that subject is Shannon Sharp. You saw that opening uh, with myself and Shannon Sharp. It was a cold open I did on Memorial Day, his first day, a day in which we did 727,000 views in linear television, just breaking records. It was second, the second highest rated show of the year for first take. I had the first highest after the Super Bowl in February. But Shannon Sharp is a welcomed addition to the show. And in his two days that we've been together, we've done 727,000 viewers one day, 512,000 viewers the next day. Um, and ESPN usually averages, meaning first take on ESPN usually averages close to half a million viewers each morning. Um, I got a lot of respect for Shannon Sharp, and I got to tell you, working with him thus far has been an absolute pleasure. Make no mistake about it. I give him a lot of props, a lot of credit. And it I really appreciate him reminding me and reinforcing why I went out there and recruited him and got him to come on the first take after he was let go by FS1. Um, we talked on his podcast about this very subject when Shannon Sharp asked me, um, why did I want him and why did I go to bat for him? When I was on his podcast called Club Shay Shay, I want y'all to see this interaction between myself and Shannon Sharp explaining exactly why I went after him and why I wanted him on first take with me. Take a look. I remember when I first arrived on first take and I rolled up in there and I saw a bunch of white folks. And I said, yo, where the brothers and the <laughs> sisters at? You know what I worry about? The day that I want to leave and I haven't done anything to create opportunities for us to continue. And so for me, it's like, I look at you, I think that you're smart, you're obviously incredibly accomplished, and then your heart, being con a conscientious brother, caring about the issues that you caring about, speaking about the issues that you speak about. Nah, brother, iron sharp as iron. Now the number one reason I came out, Shannon Sharp, and I said, I want Shannon Sharp on first take, because I wanted the world to know that you were wanted. I didn't want you to be in a situation where the sports world looked at you and said, what do you do? He must have done something. Mm -hmm. Persona non grata. Yep. This is a brother that I think has done a lot of good work on television that has helped our community. Mm -hmm. And as a result, it's incumbent upon me because of the perch that I sit on to let them know right. he's wanted. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, I meant that from the bottom of my heart and I mean it today. And I feel compelled to reiterate something that's very important to me that y'all understand. I'm not here to make friends. That's not why I'm in this business. That's not what I'm about. That's not what I do. But it doesn't mean I want enemies. And it doesn't mean that I don't sincerely want to help my brothers and sisters. I'm not anti anything. One of the greatest women I've ever known was white. She happened to be my grandmother. She taught me about racism, too, and what racism really, really looks like and what a lot of white folks are thinking from time to time. And that's a different subject for another day. But I say all of that to say that I don't look at somebody's skin color and judge their character. I look at their actions and their behavior and I judge their character. But the same is applicable to white people, to black people, I'm sorry. You know, one of the things that I religiously have stated you know, you've got black folks, a lot of black folks that are quick to remind you that the first human being on the face of this earth created from the dust of the ground, the man who walked in the garden with God and talked with God himself, Adam, was a black man. And I often say to people, that's the good part. You know what the bad part is? Cain, that means Cain was black too. And he murdered his own brother. If you want to get biblical as a Christian. So what I'm saying to you is that just because you black don't mean you good. And just because you're white doesn't mean you're evil. One's actions speak louder than just words. In our business, the business that Shannon Sharp is in, the business that I'm in. Our actions coincide with our words. Because it speaks to our intent. And I knew 
what Shannon was going through because it happened to me. When I was let go in 2009 and left for dead and they was ready to write me off, I didn't have a Stephen A. Smith in the position that this Stephen A. Smith is in to look out for me. No matter what work I did, no matter what I accomplished, no matter how hard I worked, no matter how much better I may or may not have been than others, I didn't have anybody in a position to do but so much for me initially, which was why I was unemployed from 2009 to 2010, which is why when I finally got a job in 2010 for Fox Sports Radio, I still needed to work to gain traction again, which is why when I got hired back by ESPN in 2011, I was prohibited from being on television restricted to radio and radio only. I know what Shannon is going through or was going through. And that brother didn't deserve that. And the more I work with him, the more I enjoy him. To be in his presence, I got to tell y'all, all a brother wanted was respect. I ain't getting him and skip business. That's their business. But I can tell you as somebody who's dealing with him directly, all he wants is to be respected and appreciated. And he already knows he has that from me. I told him on his podcast to his face, and I'll tell you, my audience, to my face, my job with him, Marcus Spears, Swagoo, Ryan Clark, Kimberly Martin, Mina Kimes, Dan Orlovsky, Mad Dog Russo. The list goes on and on and on. And that includes J.J. Reddick, Jay Williams, Monica McNutt during the NBA season, along with my boy Big Perk, Kendrick Perkins, all of them. Because of the perch that I've been blessed and lucky enough to be sitting in, if they're not better off, not just as talent, but making better money and being more successful, during or in the aftermath of their time on first take than they were before they arrived on first take, I have failed them. Because it's my job as the marquee talent on the show, as the executive producer on the show, with connections to the bosses. I didn't ask to be executive producer. They asked me to be executive producer. It's my obligation along my boy Pete McConvo, by the way, who's spectacular, just a spectacular producer. Okay, and James Dunn. I can't take any of the credit. And Antoine Lewis, before he suffered from being, you know, one of the cuts, he was a great producer. I didn't do this alone. I don't do this alone. But because of the position that I'm in, I owe it to those guys to give them all I've got and to make sure that as I shine, they shine too. And of course, Molly Karam, who I love dearly, and I don't ever want to do the show without. So let me just get that out of the way. 